One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. So today's episode is extra special because we do this every year and I love celebrating gratitude. So when this episode goes live, it's going to be the Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States. And I thought, why not focus on gratitude and blessings. We've done this the past few years and it's always a lot of fun and I hope it's a real treat and I hope that you kind of just enjoy the different types of content that I create on my podcast so you are inspired to do your show the way you want to do it. So let's get right to it. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? So today's episode is a bonus episode. There are actually no show notes, no extra homework, and nothing for you to take away other than learning a little bit about gratitude and the way that you can celebrate some of your blessings. So I thought I would share a little bit about what I do personally, some of the traditions we have as a family, and I hope that you just take away just like this is just a feel-good episode, whether you're cooking for your family, you're hanging out with loved ones you haven't seen. I hope that this is that warm, fuzzy episode that just puts a smile on your face. So how can you practice gratitude in your everyday life? So something that I have done for the last few years is I keep a daily gratitude journal. And it's something that I realized about myself is I don't do well under pressure. I don't like it when someone says, you have to do something this way. Like, I guess it's my rebellious nature. I immediately either don't want to do it or I don't want to do it how someone told me I had to do it. So for a while, I would write down 
three gratitudes every day. And then I would just literally verbatim every day, I would put the date in the top left-hand corner of my little journal, and then I would say, today I'm grateful for, and I would list out three things. Well, then after a while, I started to feel like three isn't enough. Isn't that crazy? Like writing down, just think about it for a second. If you wrote down three different things every day, For 365 days, like that's a thousand something blessings that you can count in a year. And I still felt like it wasn't enough. I thought that I had more blessings. Now, I want to tell you a little bit more about my backstory because it is important to understand why I think this way. So I have been doing gratitude journals, I guess, since about 2014, 2015, when I first started writing, but it wasn't very often. I didn't do it on a regular basis. I didn't write on a regular basis at that point either. I was just trying to get into the practice of getting up earlier. (laughs) Like that was feat number one was, oh my gosh, I just got to wake up before the kids do. I want to be able to have a cup of coffee in silence. So Back in those days, I mean, it feels like it was forever ago, but in reality, it was only five or six years ago, I was struggling to just wake up in the morning, not from a a place of like depression or anything like that. I just physically was, I had just had a baby. We had our youngest son. He was born in 2015, and it was just really hard for me to find a lot of purpose in just being a stay-at-home mom. This is part of my story. I've shared it before that, you know, being a stay-at-home mom and trying to grapple with that's all I was going to do is something that I struggled with for a while. And I remember thinking, well, this is silly. I shouldn't get up and write because what is writing going to lead to, right? If If it doesn't have an immediate payoff, I'm typically not very interested, but I did start the gratitude practice. Those were my initial writings, not writing a whole page in my journal every day or writing for 10 or 20 minutes. It was just, what are three things that you're grateful for today? And then I did challenge myself. I'm like, you can't say coffee every day. (laughs) You can't just write coffee, my husband, and kids every day. That's cheating. So I started to challenge myself a little bit more and say, okay, well, what else? Okay, well, fresh air or a beautiful day or the fact that we can afford groceries. Like it it really came down to the most basic things. But in reality, if you look around, those are things we should all be grateful for. I know I'm going to get like deep and spiritual and kind of woo-woo in today's episode. But again, this is my bonus episode. I can do what I want with today's talk about gratitude, but it really hits me on a different emotional level when I sit here and I think, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed. And something that we do a lot as a family is we'll have dinner times together and we pray. And one of my go-to prayers is I'm grateful for the roof over our head and the food in our bellies. It's something that I've I've said for years, years and years and years before we have a meal, we'll say this prayer, like the kids will say it. Oftentimes my husband's like, I don't know what else to say. He'll say the same thing, but it's our default because at its most basic level, that's a pretty amazing thing to be grateful for. Just having a roof over my head, a safe place for my kids to sleep at night. The fact that we're all healthy, I mean... That's like, psh, like you see that that GIF. I'm imagining that GIF where it's like Chris Pratt and his like brain is exploding. He's going, psh. that's what I feel like. If we really think about, like sit down wherever you are right now, look around you. What do you have to be grateful for? My, 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 my husband, my son, so I was trying to say, my oldest son, he's in middle school. And he came home from athletics the other day and he was like, mom, there were these kids like they were jacking around and they were goofing off and they made us do more squats and they made us do all these other things because all these kids were blah, blah, like he was just going on and on and on. And I was an athlete all growing up. So I get it. I totally get it. And I told him, I'm, I'm going to tell you what my coach told me. One day you're going to pay to have someone 
get your butt into gear and get you into shape because you're probably going to go to a personal trainer or you're going to go to the gym. Like I told him that and I'm sure he's like rolling his eyes like, mom, okay, okay, whatever, mom. Because I kind of rolled my eyes at my coach when she said that to me when I was in middle school. But now I get it. (laughs) I totally understand what she meant. But then I told him when he was just going on and on, he was just whining, complaining about, you know, we just had to do so many squats. My butt hurts so bad and this and that. And I said, you know that there's someone out there in the world right now that would kill to be able to do a squat. Maybe they have a form of, you know, they just, they don't have legs. They don't have feet. They are not capable of doing all the things that a healthy young man who is able-bodied is able to do. Do you see that? And he looked at me like, why are you the way that you are, mom? <laughs> no, I know that he had that look on his face. Like, really? Like, you're going to you're gonna take it to that level? But it's so true. Like, oftentimes we just have to look at what's around us. And I know I'm guilty of it too. I whine and complain and I moan about things that I'm not happy about. But at the end of the day, I go back to my gratitude journal and I say, did I have five things that I was able to write down today? And sometimes it's electricity. Sometimes it's the fact that we have internet. Sometimes it's that, and I'll get to some more interesting stories about gratitude in a second, very creative ideas that our kids come up with. But I, I challenge you today, look around your surroundings and ask, how many things can I name that I'm grateful for? Maybe it's just a sunny day. Maybe it's a warm cup of coffee. Maybe it's 20 minutes alone for you to think and meditate. I know back in the day in 2015, 2016, when our son was an infant and he wasn't sleeping, I remember being so, so grateful for those days when he would sleep through the night or those days when I didn't feel like I was at his beck and call and I could just detach for a second and have 20 minutes to myself. The big things don't always have to be the big things. The big things can actually be the small blessings that you have day in and day out. So the other thing that I want to talk about is what we do together at the dinner table. I told you a little bit about like we we pray, you know, we we try to sit down at least several times a week. It's not just once a week. We try to sit down as a family and have dinner together. That's one of my things. It's like one of those quirky things that I'm this is why I'm so protective with my boundaries when I work, when I'm with my family, and dinner time is something that I just cherish. I cherish so much the conversations that we have at dinner, the silly things that my boys do, y'all. So my kids, uh, when I'm recording this, my kids are 12, 9, and 5. And the things that come out of those boys' mouths, I mean, it's they're hilarious. They are all so funny. I hope they never grow out of their humor and the things that they say to each other because it's just I'm I'm mostly crying like every night because I'm laughing so hard. They are so hilarious, which I feel blessed about that as well. But what we do is as a family, we I always ask, okay, who's gonna go first? And without fail, they know exactly what I'm talking about because this is part of our tradition and it's called best part, worst part. So if you're trying to connect with your family members and you want something fun and different to do, whether you're sitting around the table, you're having breakfast in the morning, you're it's over coffee with your spouse or your partner, I encourage you to try this out. So it's called best part, worst part, and it's quite simple. It's just you saying, okay, Share the best part of your day and the worst part of your day. And then I will often say something that's, you know, it was it was a highlight. Like today, I'll literally, I'm sharing this with you today when I'm recording this. The best part of my day today is I got to go on a run this morning and it was beautiful weather. When I'm recording this, it's fall in Texas. And I, I don't know if you've ever been to Texas in the fall, but it's usually still like 85, 90 degrees until we really get into fall. It was 55 degrees this morning and it was sunny. So it was cool, but it wasn't too cold. And it was just, it was beautiful running weather. And it felt so amazing. I felt like I've finally got my stride back. So that was one of the best parts of my day 
is going on a run, feeling good about it. It makes me feel stronger mentally, physically, spiritually whenever I run like that. So that was the best part of my day. Maybe the worst part of my day, I don't really know that I had one today. But this is one where we give the kids the opportunity and anybody that's with us to kind of share that grievance. Like if you've been holding on to something, like the other day, <laughs> I did have a worst part of my day. And it was... um what was it? One day I stubbed my toe really bad and it was just so silly, but I, it was a very real thing, right? It's it's a real thing. Like don't hold all those things in and just say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Well, this gives you the opportunity to get it off your chest and bring it up. Like if, if anytime you were going to complain, it's at the best part, worst part table because everybody can share. And it's really fun, especially for those of you that do have kids and you're trying to connect with them. My kids tend to open up at the table because they're just used to it because my husband and I will be really honest about the best parts and the worst parts of our day. Um, I've had internet issues that have totally messed things up. I've talked about having uh, just a difficult conversation with someone that was really uncomfortable. It just really creates that space for you to have open communication with your family. And it's just... It's such a blessing. It's kind of awkward at first because people are like, oh, how do we share this? But we've been doing this for several years now. So if anybody's starting with kids, just know it's probably going to be awkward at first or even with your partner, but it's it's really awesome. It's awesome to hear those little nuances of someone's day. And then the other part. So that's the first thing we do. So it, it kind of, it's it, there's five of us. So it's like a round table discussion. Our youngest is usually raising his hand saying, can I go first? Can I go first? He usually goes first and then he'll do his best part and his worst part. Most of the time the kids will say, well, I don't really have a worst part. But then you have to share three things that you're grateful for or what the boys, it's so funny, I'm gonna laugh when I say it, what they call the rat toots. <laughs> the reason why <laughs> the reason why they call them this is because we used to say, okay, you have to share three gratitudes and one time I think that I said it too fast or something and I and they they said, "What? Did you just say rat toots?" Anyway, total inside joke. I guess it's one of those you had to be there, but th we just die laughing every time. So we just call it our rat toots. You got to share your rat toots. And the kids are encouraged to share three things that they're grateful for. Y'all, I'm blown away. So I have my own gratitude practice, right? This is what I do by myself when I'm drinking my coffee in the morning. It's just a great way to start my day, like from a place of gratitude. But it's also how I end my day with my family when they're all sharing the things that they're grateful for. And what we challenge them is to not say the same thing every day. Just like I challenge myself, I can't say coffee, my husband and my family every single day. They have to say something different. The things that they come up with are phenomenal. And it just, it, it makes my heart, I feel like the Grinch, like where the heart grows like two or three sizes bigger because they're so inventive. Now that they've already said all of the basic things, they're thankful for our dog, our cat, you know, Christmas, their grandparents, all of these things that kids would normally say, they've started to get really creative. The other day, one of the kids was like, I'm grateful for spoons. And I was like, wow, me too. We were eating soup. I was like, yes, me too. And then one of them said, well, I'm grateful for chairs because otherwise we'd all be sitting on the floor and our butts might hurt a little bit. I was like, yes, yes. It's not comfortable to sit on the ground anymore. I can't sit crisscross applesauce and feel good about it. Like it's just not the same as when I was a kid. And then they'll say things like, I'm thankful for electricity. I'm grateful for my friends. And then it just it's really just expanded to this thing that I never imagined when we started doing this. But it's what I look forward to every day, every single day. So if you're trying to work in more gratitude into your life, I hope that these practices encourage you. I hope that at the very least, if you're with your family over the next few days, you can turn to them and say, hey, what's the best part and the worst part of your day? Do you have any gratitudes to share or just one thing that you're thankful for? We also have this longstanding tradition that we do at our family where on Thanksgiving dinner, we'll all stand around the table, 
we all hold hands, we say a prayer, and everyone has to share one thing that they're grateful for. And we will typically say no one can repeat someone else's gratitude. And it's funny because it's usually, I remember doing this as a kid and just rolling my eyes and saying, everyone's just going to say they're grateful that we're all here together, which is usually what happened because it was the sometimes the only time all the cousins got together or the aunts and the uncles and, you know, people that we don't often see. But now it's really fun to go into the season and have a lot of gratitude for all the blessings that we have. And I look forward to being able to say all the things that I'm grateful for because I recognize them on a regular basis. Even on those hard days, even when I don't want to and things are kind of sucky and things are slow and I'm frustrated, I can still look at everything around me and say, I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful for the things and the people and just all the blessings that I have in my life. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that you have a fantastic holiday if you are on holiday break. And if not, I hope that you find a way to work in gratitude, however it looks like for you, for your business, in your professional life, in your personal life. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. But that's all I have for you today. So as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.